hello and welcome to my channel or if you're new here my name is Jennifer and in today's video we're going to be tackling this huge advent calendar Brusilla kit. Um, it's definitely one of the bigger kits that I've done so a lot of the tutorials for this particular kit are going to be a little bit longer so I hope you get some valuable information as I make this kit for you. Um, if you've ever made this kit leave a comment down below I'd love to know what you guys thought of it and um and uh, possibly join my Facebook group and share pictures because I love seeing all of your projects. So here's a bundle of thread and beads and sequins and other little things in there. Every kit has one of those. And um, here is the pile, literally a pile <laughs> of felt that we'll be working with. Got some awesome colors in here. Part of my children, they're playing in the background. So there's all the felt. That is a lot of felt. <laughs> and then there's some Pellen backing to go on the very back once it's finished. And oh, some instructions. There's two things of instructions in here. They've got different um, languages. I'm not sure what all the languages are, but uh, we're going to be mostly working with English today. If you've never made a kit like this before, be prepared because this is not beginner friendly. I would have to say this is definitely one of the more challenging kits I've tackled. There's just so many pieces and there's just so much detail. I mean, look at this. So many things going on. We've got all these ornaments that we'll be making. And the calendar itself looks interesting. Um, uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to turn out. They've got all this instructions, all the types of um, stitches you'll be doing. And here's the key for the beads and sequins and the stitches. So I'm gonna have the instructions on, on hand so I make sure I don't miss anything. With a kit like this, it would be really easy to miss a step. So even if you're just going off of the numbers, sometimes it's good to keep the instructions handy. So this is just the different languages. Okay. So I'm gonna flip it over and try and find where we start. Okay. So here is where we start. We're gonna start on this side. If you feel like reading through the instructions, do it. There's a lot. So always refer to the design chart. I will definitely be referring to it because, like I said, this kit is huge. So many details. This kit is huge. Cute little teddy bear. Okay. I'm just looking at how many pieces there are. It's roughly yeah, over 200 pieces. And I don't know if they're including yeah, like duplicates because the be little ornaments, there's duplicates of them. So there may be more than 200 and almost 30 pieces. Yeah, it's a big kit. You can definitely tell by the number of pieces how, how big a kit is. I think a good size kit is a little bit less than 100 pieces. Um, but this is an advent calendar and not a stocking, so. Okay. So I'm going to um, sort my thread and um, check off all the colors. And I have a little a ring with um, little thread holders that I like to use. I actually bought a second one because there's so many colors for this that I'm just going to make a new one. Okay, so here's my second ring that I bought, and all the items that I use are in the description box below if you guys want to check those out. Um, I just go, I went ahead and sorted all the colors. A couple of these colors, I'm just like, why are there two of these colors? So, like, these two colors are so close. You can tell, like, the left one has kind of got a blue tint to it. And then here's an, oh, let me find it. It's uh, right here. These yellows, one's yellow and one's gold. Okay, do you see a difference here? I don't see any differences. <laughs> so we'll find out if they have, 
if they have a, an actual difference in color. Um, but honestly, they look the same to me. Here's all the sequins. Not very many sequin colors and the bead colors. And the needles, uh, this is the beading needle. It's long and thin. And here's the applique needle, which is a little bit shorter and it's got some, it's a little bit thicker too. So I will uh, take this out of the package to show you better. That's the applique needle. And the beading needle. Oh, focus. Okay, there we go. You could see slight differences. The eyes are a little bit different and the thickness is different too. So I like to sort my needles and I put my applique needles in the tomato and I like to put my beading needles on my other pin cushion with all my little, with all my other needles and stuff. All right, so we're gonna start with the first piece. Okay, so here's just what the instructions say. I'm not gonna read them all, um, cause there's a lot. So I'm just gonna literally show you step by step. And um, forgive me because I've never actually made this kit. So I'm anticipating a couple of mistakes along the way. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> Disclaimer, <laughs> I've never made this kit before. So this is definitely gonna be a challenge. So we're gonna find the first piece and here it is. It's on the, it's like a burgundy color felt. And I zoomed out on my camera so you guys can actually see the piece because it's a big piece. So I'm going to take the time to cut this out because you can see there's little tiny areas that I'm going to have to take my time cutting it out. So, all right. So here's the piece cut out fully. Excuse my mess. My floor is a mess. <laughs> um, I'm in my bedroom right now. So, okay. So we're going to start with the, I think this is like a... What is this? It's a back stitch. Yeah, we're going to do back stitch. It looks like a back stitch. Yep. Uh, right there. Yep. So we're going to do um, four strands. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, we're going to do four strands. That's I'm trying to find it here. It's an outline stitch. Mm, right there. Yep. Four strands of light brown. <laughs> yep, that's what we're doing right there. And we're doing the back stitch. Okay, so I'm going to speed this part up. And I'm going to let you guys uh, watch my process. Um, I'm not going to talk the whole time because this tutorial is already long enough. So I'm going to let you guys... Um, Watch how I work.
I went as far as I thought I should go. Um, I wasn't sure about when to stop because it was a little bit hard to tell. So I'm going to um, move on. Um, I'm just noticing beads here and just trying to match the picture. I like to use the picture as reference. And sometimes the dots are there and sometimes they're not. So sometimes I like to add a little bit here and there, but we're gonna do uh, red on red. And um, I'm gonna let you watch me do that. So here we go. This is just the outline stitch. Um, I believe it was two strands of dark brown. So um, now we're gonna do the face. And I'm just gonna quickly do the face for you. The little dots are two, or no, no, one strand. I think one strand of black, yeah. One strand of black. And these are just a bunch of French knots. And if you don't know how to do French knots, I do have a separate tutorial. that's a little bit more detailed on it, but um, this is pretty much how you do a French knot, so yeah. And you go all the way around and um, and then we're gonna do the little uh, hands for the clock and my French knots aren't perfect but they get the job done so I finished all my French knots and I'm gonna add detail to the sorry I'm trying to look at what I'm doing and I'm not in the camera um, I'm, I'm outlining the um, clock hands so I'm using a I'm using two strands of black and um, for the little like arrows I did like a straight stitch even though it calls for an outline stitch it just doesn't make sense I might as well just do a straight stitch is a lot easier and then I did the outline stitch for the rest of the clock hands Yeah, there's one hand. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in the camera. I think I have it zoomed in just a little too much. <laughs> Still working my uh, camera skills here. So yeah, I'll just do the hand. 
hands are done, double knot in the back. Okay, I gotta make sure that it's facing the right way. So that's why I have the picture right next to me, so. Okay, I'm gonna applique these two pieces together and um, I'm gonna let you watch so I'm not talking to you the whole time. So I appliqued the clock face, the white part, with one strand of white and um, looking good so far. So now we're going to look at, I think we're going to do the top part right here. I'm not quite sure. I have to make sure I look at the instructions. So yeah, so we're going to add the leaves on top. And um, they alternate color, which I kind of like. So the dark green gets light green for the embroidery and the light green gets dark green for the embroidery which is a nice contrast so I never forget what color because if it's a light it's a light green then I'm using dark green you'll see what I mean in a second <laughs> okay so I'm going to show you real quick um, see how the dark green has light green outline outline stitch that way the colors kind of pop so I'm going to let you watch my process
jump in real quick and just um, tell you what's going on here. So um, I'm using two strands of orange for this satin stitch and uh, it's definitely not one of my favorite stitches. <laughs> I'm still practicing it so um, I think um, this is a good way to learn is by doing. So I'm just doing the satin stitch right now. And um, this is for the little candle flames. Once it's finished, I love the, the way it looks, but uh, actually doing the satin stitch tends to be a little bit tedious for me. So I just gotta figure out a, a good way, a good strategy to make it so where it's it's consistent. That's the, that's the real challenge of a satin stitch is to make sure it's all consistent and when you're done, it doesn't look like you've got gaps. So I, I like to go from the middle outwards. Um, I find that's a little bit easier, but I'm still looking for a better method. So bear with me. <laughs> um, you have to do this twice. So there's two candles for the top of the um, fireplace. I really do love this orange color. It really brings out the flame, which is really cool. I think out of all the stitches, this one takes the longest for me and it's the most tedious, which is why I need to find a, a method that works well. So I'm just doing some research, trying to find different ways to do this particular stitch. When I find one that works for me, I will definitely let you know. So for now, this is how I'm going to do it. Make sure that you just go slow and that the tension, that your, that your thread tension is consistent. When I started doing the satin stitch, my thread tension was kind of all over the place. It was definitely too tight. So I would pull it and it would, um, it would kind of warp the felt a little too much so it's a learning curve for sure this is the first candle done and I just did a little dark brown outline stitch right there and do it's um, gold beads and gold sequins and we're gonna do the same thing for the other side and um, real quick I just wanted to put the candle together so you knew what it looked like um, the blue has nothing on it I just applied it and then the I'm guessing it's like candle wax I don't know because it can't be snow because we're inside at least I think that this kit is inside <laughs> I'm just gonna guess that it's candle wax or something so I'm gonna applique that onto the candle and then I'm going to finish the second candle so just want to see, show you what it looks like completed and then I'll do this second one and I'll show you what that looks like we are done with both candles and notice how they are they're kind of mirrored and I double checked the picture does match so um, now we're gonna do the leaves the leaves portion of it uh, it takes up a lot of a lot of work so I um, I'm just gonna show you real quick all the leaves on the diagram so we've got all these leaves and they they do alternate colors and they do go in a specific order so make sure that you do put them in order because they have to lay a certain way and the same rules apply with the other ones so with the dark green you have two strands of light green thread with the light green leaves you have two strands of dark green thread and they're all outline stitch so I am going to start doing those and then I'll let you guys watch.
Okay, so now that we got those two leaves on, now we get to put the top of the fireplace on. And um, there are a few embellishments. Um, there's this line and then these beads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real fast. Those are outline stitch and the beads. And they're fairly quick. And then once you do that, we're going to applique the piece onto here. And um, I'm just gonna do it off camera because uh, it's, you know, rinse and repeat basically. So here's what we have so far. And now we know where all the leaves are going now. So you see all the outlines. So that's good. Um, I'm not gonna show you every single leaf because again, it's time consuming and it's basically rinse and repeat. So what I like to do with the leaves is when they hang, I like to just applique the end, like the base of them so they have a cool 3D effect. And then once the leaves are laid down, um, then the, the berries go down. So I am, again, the order is very important here because you think all the leaves would go down first and then the beet, and then the beet, the berries, but as you can see, I've already put berries down and I don't applique the berries. I just attach them with a bead and sequin. So here's what I have so far. And I'm just going to add the last of the berries. It's like a group of three. And, um, and then we'll be done with this portion of the video. Okay, this video is already so long, so I'm just going to end it after these berries and finish the other berries off camera. But thank you for watching this tutorial, and I hope it was helpful. If it was, leave a comment down below. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Um, my channel is basically all embroidery, so whether hand embroidery or machine embroidery, I'm hoping to add more of those soon. So, celebrating Christmas in July. <laughs> Alright, I will see you in my next tutorial. Thank you for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye!